Bob, I'm ready to start the cooking videos. Bertoli, Ziploc. All right, Ranzoni. Can you spare it? Let's begin. New York, land of the free and home of the Dodgers. Well, not anymore, but this is where I grew up. My whole family settled right here in Bensonhurst, Brooklyn, New York. <laughs> Whenever Carol and I get to New York, we invariably sit around a big table filled with the most delicious food, a feast. A feast, I tell you, cooked by my mama. Love you, mama. It seems like only yesterday that I was born in my mother's bedroom in the same house that she lives in today. Things were very quiet. There were very few cars, a lot of religious training. My father served in the army, and my mother served in the kitchen. And 40 years later, she's still at it. <laughs> hey, Ma! Very good. Let's go to my yellows. Come on. Mom, here! Let's go to our yellows! Oh, hi, Tini. Look at the baby. Oh, he's so cute. Okay, sit. Mom, why don't you call him? I'll make some spaghetti for you. You were going to make spaghetti? Okay. Let, yeah. All right. Jump. Come on, jump, Ma! <laughs> jump! 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 I'll come Ma, down with the other Jump! Way. No, never mind. I'll be right in. I love you. I'll see you, Ma. All right. Now, I am crazy about chicken. I think chicken and lemon is just absolutely wonderful. My wife, Carol, when you make chicken, you just put lemon. lemon. Plain lemon juice. Oh, it's lovely. Just the lemon juice, a little pepper, maybe. Now, what I like to do is take the skin off and discard it. I put that in my garden. I put that underneath my trees. And I take some lemon juice and put the chicken in the lemon juice. And now, what I do is I take a paper bag this is really kind, kind of nice. Flavored breadcrumbs. I take um, a little parsley when nobody's looking. Some grated cheese. Here you go. Now, I'm taking the pieces of chicken, and I'm dropping them in there three at a time. Here's a nice chicken wing, lemon juice. OK, this is interesting. Make this. Now, I'm just doing this. That bag has a hole, but you don't have to do it. Now you reach in, and you have chicken that's coated with the, you have the flavor of the lemon, and you have the coated breadcrumbs. Now, we're going to do this. The nice thing about this is when you're through, all the breadcrumbs are gone, and all you simply have to do is, um, well, I put a little parsley, and then we're going to take some chopped onion and put it around there. That, this is simple, simple, folks. You can do this in your sleep. A little olive oil. Hold this. Hold my chicken, Carol. And mine is a little more complicated than yours. Yeah, I yeah. just do it with the lemon. You just do it with the lemon. Just dribble a little olive oil on it. But yours is delicious. Mine is delicious. Well, I like your chicken. You like... She, she makes very good chicken. Want to see her smile? Ah! <laughs> okay. I'll see you. Thank you for helping me. Thank you. Mm. you going out later? Yeah. Why is it that I'm wearing the apron and she's wearing a brooch? Oh, that's great. Here you go. Lemon chicone. Hey, remember the lemon that dropped on my head? Here it is, you dirty dog. Take that. OK. And then I sprinkle the lemon right on it. Oh, it's lovely. And you can just put lemon pieces around it. And then 
Now you take a little piece of lemon and you put it here and a little here in case someone comes up behind you and sucks your neck. Mama's lemon chicken, good enough to eat. Uh huh. You know something, Ma? I think Aiello's is my favorite store in Brooklyn. Hey, Vinny, how you doing? Very good, very good. Long time very no good. see. How's everything? Oh, Hi, Mrs. Delaware. Hey, Mr. Listen, over here. what do we need? Oh, these look good, but don't they? They're delicious. Yeah, they're... rice balls, potato, and oh. prosciutto balls. Very nice. Boy, they have to kill them so young for that. Um, <laughs> two two prosciutto balls, two potato balls, and two rice balls. Let's see, what else? Uh, so how much for the got to do you want? One can of got and two mozzarella. One can of got and two mozzarella. Now the mozzarella's fresh? Nice and fresh. Mr. Ayala makes it himself. All these years I never knew that, that the mozzarella is handled by these guys. They shape it. I knew the shape was there, but I didn't know how the shape got there. They pull it, they, they, they yank it, they shape it. Can you apply this to your own body? Because I would like to be longer and thinner. Maybe I should sit in that water right now and have these two guys pull me apart. I'd be 12 feet long and perfectly thin. Oh, look at that. Oh, my goodness. Look at this. Fuzili, here you go. Oh, thanks a lot. Take it easy, Vinny. All right. Come on, let's go. Here we go. Okay. So long. This is nice, but everything is fresh, including Vinny. <laughs> This is one of my most favorite salads in the whole world. Tomato, mozzarella, and fresh basil. And I do mean fresh. Here, let me show you how it's made. It's so simple. You just get a nice beef steak tomato. Fortunately, I grew some in the yard that was really nice. Now you discard the, the top, and then you make some slices of tomato. OK, really nice. Now, I use. Mozzarella in, in the water, which is um, the same pizza cheese, mozzarella. Now, it's almost done. The salad's almost done. We're going to take some fresh basil leaves that had this plant has been literally washed, scrubbed. And then I start making my platter. Here's your palate. And you just lay your tomato slices down and you have this wonderful opportunity to <laughs> lose a piece. There's nothing like losing a piece. Each slice of tomato has a slice of mozzarella. Now, each one gets a leaf. So I'm going to just put it right down over here. Here you go. And I just put a leaf right, a fresh basil leaf, right on each piece of mozzarella. So I like to just sprinkle extra virgin olive oil on it. I mean, not a lot, just a little kind of a dribbling. Just that's all, just a little dribbling of it. Tomato, mozzarella, basil. A little bit of olive oil. Isn't that nice? Oh, I just love it. Fresh basil. Mm -mm. I think God did such a wonderful job with basil. You want to have a little demi tasse, Ma? Yes, sir. Oh, good, OK. Hey, Max. Hey, good morning. How you doing? I need two demi tasse. Sure, coming up. All right, beautiful. Ah. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, no sugar. You put sugar in yours, Ma? No, thank you. No sugar. OK. Here, Ma. Saluda. Saluda. <laughs> the best demi in the world. The best demi in the world. Excellent. Excellent. Ma, how long did you live in this in this neighborhood? 1928. 1928? I know all the stores I've been enjoying. These stores have been here since 1928? No wonder this coffee is so strong. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have a salami sandwich to go? To go into my mouth. <laughs> Thanks this a lot. is my favorite store in Brooklyn. Come on, Ma. This is garlic, an Italian's best friend. Now, the point is that if you are an Italian and you wear this around your neck, no decent vampire will suck your blood. 
no decent person will dance with you. But a lot of people don't like to touch garlic because it has a kind of a smell on your fingers. What I do is that I pre-cut it, and I'll show you how I do that. First, I peel it. Then I get a Cuisinart. You can do this with a knife. Just keep chopping it up. But I'm showing you how to do a lot of it and save it for the refrigerator. I have the metal blade. I set my blade going. Now I'm taking my peeled garlic and just dropping it into the Cuisinart. Slowly cutting on the fly. <laughs> now, you just wait. wait. It kind of accumulates on the sides. It's done. OK. Now I take the metal blade. Be very careful. This blade is, is treacherous. OK. Remove the bowl. I'm going to get a little jar. And I, what I do is I gather all this minced garlic up. This is just all garlic. And it goes into the jar. Now what I do is, in order to preserve it, I cover that with olive oil. And sometimes when an, an, a recipe calls for a little bit of olive oil and, and garlic, I have it already, see? Ah, that's good. Here you go. Garlic for a week. <laughs> Boy, the... Oh, oh! Joke. Joke. This escrow, isn't it wonderful? Look how nice and big those heads are. I think that's terrific. Now, usually it says one head of escrow, two heads of escrow, but they vary in size a great deal. Usually, if you can just grab it like that, that's like, okay, that's for good for two people because this kind of shrinks up. This is good for half a person. Now, what I do is I take the end of this off, discard, and then I cut this up and throw it in my sink with a little water, because I'm going to rinse this off. It's crispy and therapeutic. <laughs> choppy, choppy. And then just now, rinse this real well. Ah, just make sure that's all good. I oh, love you. Just make sure you get that all washed. Wash your escarole. Okay, now, we're making today escarole soup. So here's what we do. Okay, we're going to take a pan. We're going to take this two tablespoons of olive oil and two garlic cloves. And we're going to add an onion, a carrot, a potato, and some chicken broth. So here's my onion. Here's my potato. Here's my carrot. I just, just nice pieces like this. This is going to be a terrific soup. I tell you, with a loaf of bread and a friend, you can't go wrong. Now, there's a variation here. With this recipe, you can add a sausage if you want. It makes it kind of interesting. Now, did you see me just drop that in? Casual cooking. OK. One cup, two cups. Now, here's the escarole, the washed escarole. Here you go. Just take all of that and put it into the... Oh, this is really good. Okay. Here we go. Now, it fills this pot up, but you'll be surprised when I take the lid off where this all goes. Here you go. When you're adding the sausage, I usually add it with the garlic up front and just brown the sausage. Now, you don't need the sausage at all. And you, you would have a, a nice uh, meatless soup. You cover this. 20 minutes later. Whoa, that was good. That was good. Oh, look at that. Oh, boy. Isn't that good? Escarole soup. Mm -mm. 
It's soup. Okay, Ma. <laughs> Here we go. This is my favorite store in all of Brooklyn, the macaroni store. Oh, good. Hello. Hi. How you doing? Fine. How are you, sir? Come on. This is a beautiful store. It's so clean. It's so tight. Thank you, thank you. How are you, Doug? Good luck, good. How long have you been here? Okay, okay terrific. It's a pleasure for me, too. What can I do for you? Listen, I, when you make your, your macaroni fresh every day, right? Sure. Ravioli every day. Every day. As a matter of fact, we make it right now. Oh, Everything that's beautiful. Set. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my sad duty to inform you that we're going to make a dish that is really quite dangerous. It's called pasta vazul, or pasta fagioli, beans and macaroni. It's a delicious dish, but it is very dangerous. You cannot leave pasta fagioli alone with children. They'll blow themselves right out the window. Where's Johnny? He just left. No, if you don't know about pasta fagioli, you just cannot just haphazardly one bowl you can eat, two bowls, you can ruin the wallpaper. But it is delicious. Boiling water, half a pound, elbow macaroni, digitelli, any little macaroni that you want. If you, if you don't have that kind of spaghetti, you can take um, pasta and just break it all up. Now, that's cooking. In a pot, we put some olive oil, two tablespoons of olive oil in a pot. Now, I say two garlic cloves, but you can put a little more if you want. Now, this is a eight ounce can of tomato sauce. Wait a minute, I just got here. Now we dilute it with one cup of water. Now, this cooks for a while, and I'm adding uh, a can of nice cannellini beans. Let's see. Okay, now, the pasta is done. Put it in a colander. All right. And I'm putting the pasta with the... Beans. Oh, and then I'm going to just stir that up. Now, while it's still soupy, you want to uh, serve that. I'll tell you, if it sits too long, what happens is the uh, pasta will absorb all the liquid. People um, are late for a date if your mom is serving pasta as well. I'm just going to pour that in there and let you look at that. It's pasta and... Fajoli. It really is a wonderful peasant dish. I, um, I have been known uh, not to speak when I have um, pasta fagioli. I'll take it in now. Okay, guess what I got? Pasta vadu! <laughs> oh, look, ma, this is great. Oh, the bread store. Oh, it smells so good, ma. My favorite store in Brooklyn. I think they're just making bread. Oh, Margaret, Margaret, it's so good to see you. How are you? Okay, how All are right. you? All right. What a nice smell in this store, right, oh, Ma? 
the bread and the lunch. I the... come over here every day. Yeah, I remember when I was a kid, oh, I used I... to come to the store all the time. Yeah, but now I got to go myself. No, you... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's nice. That's nice. You just made a fresh bread. You made fresh you. bread? Yeah. Oh, that's great. Oh, look, Ma. These are great. Yeah. Oh, okay. <gasps> oh, my goodness. Oh, look at this. Are you kidding? Look at that. How many feet is this? Is that a loaf of bread? All right. Oh, just... Mario, you got a good idea. Yes, Mario, you're terrific. Oh, my goodness. All right, well, we'll take one loaf. I guess that'll be enough. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to join Mr. Basil and Miss Tomato. This tomato is homegrown, and of course, it's always going to give you the best flavor from the plant to your pot, delicious. But some people do not have gardens and do not have access to tomato and a fresh basil plant. So I'm going to show you an alternative. But in the meantime, if you do, if you're going to make this marriage happen in your home, you take a tomato and you put a fork in it and drop it in boiling water for 10 seconds. And then you just prick the skin and peel that sucker. It looks like something. Surprise! OK. <laughs> oh, please, I'm not dressed. <laughs> no, all right. So the point is that you do that, and you chop that up, and you get a very, very good sauce. I'm going to show you how to make a marinara sauce. Now, marinara means mariner. And what happened is, all the men would go and fish, and the woman would wait and just hope that their man would come. And then they'd see the ship, and they'd say, he's coming, oh, he's coming home with the catch of the day. And so they would start the marinara sauce, which I'm going to show you right now. Oh, my husband's coming home. Get the sauce, quick. So they made a quick sauce, and this is it. Come on. Olive oil, four tablespoons. One, two, three. That's four tablespoons. Now I'm going to get some garlic. <laughs> All right, here's some garlic. Do you think I have enough garlic? Now, now you want you to separate the cloves. Here we go. Here's the cloves all separated. Now, we take one and we, I usually cut off the back and peel it. And then take off the front and peel it. And make sure that all the skin is off the garlic clove. Very good, like that. This. Now I cut it like this, but we want it minced. We want it real little, little tiny little pieces. So here's little tiny pieces. Okay. Yes. Oh, we hear that? Okay. There's the skin. Okay. That's four, four or five of those. Because my husband is coming, I'm going to add two cans of 28 ounce crushed tomatoes. Now I stir that after my garlic is golden brown. Now I put in, a lot of people don't do this, but I put in some paste. One uh, can of tomato paste, which I think makes it thick and wonderful, and it looks like it's been cooking a long time. Then there's a secret ingredient. <laughs> the secret ingredient is uh, that I add sun-dried tomatoes. Oh, it's just a new thing. When I was a little kid, I never heard of a sun-dried tomato, but sun-dried tomatoes. Now, I also take those and chop them up, and I put about four tablespoons of sun-dried tomatoes into that. And there's something wonderful about the, actually, I put three, but they were heaping, so I'm counting that as four. Now, that was something that I just found makes it, oh, so delicious. Now, fresh basil, and I'm crazy about fresh basil, and what I do is, let's say four or five basil leaves, and I just, I just pull those apart and drop that in there. Now, in the meantime, I hope you enjoy it. Okay. <laughs> That's my mom. <laughs> oh, hello, oh. Anna. Si, mi dica, Gianluis, come sta lei? Bene, grazie. E lei? Ti piace Brooklyn? Si, mi Benvenuta. piace Brooklyn. Brooklyn Buona è signora. bella. Eh, All right, ci vediamo. Ciao, signora. Oh, oh gee. You know something, Ma? I think this store is my favorite store in all of Brooklyn. It's so festive and clean. You got anything uh, fresh today? Just made these for you. Oh, that looks great. Here, hold them up. Let me see. Oh, they're fresh, nice. Just made. Yeah, give me your other. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. I've got another, another foot, I think. Yeah, foot and a half. All right, cut it right over there. Yeah, beautiful. That's okay. terrific. Oh, that's good. Yeah, wrap them up. That's good. Oh, where are you going with that? Hey, Ma, look. Ma, 
This is fresh. Look at this. Oh, this is fresh. Oh, my goodness. Where do you make that in the back? Yep. How long is each sausage? Three and a half inches. Three and a half. <laughs> Three and a half inches? Hey, don't complain. I got my own troubles. <laughs> All right. So long, everybody. Oh, so long. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, oh. Marie. Keep it clean. Ooh. Yay! Oh, that's nice, isn't it? Yay. Hey, Phil, just what you ordered, right? That's from the pork store here. Oh, boy, is that hot. It's really hot. Take it down there. Really good. Hey, Carol, what's for lunch? Sausages, peppers, and onions. You got the sausages? All right. I'll get the peppers and onions. <laughs> okay, here we go. Peppers. Oh, those are nice. Three peppers, three onions. Oh, those are very nice. Look at that. Now, one of the things about this dish is that it is so traditional. And when you go to the Feast of St. Anthony, you are going to have sausages, peppers, and onions on a big Italian roll. It is so delicious. When you bite into that sandwich, you have to lean forward because the juice runs down your neck. Our first to the San Andonia, the Feast of St. Anthony. It was so exciting. When I was a kid, I used to come here because my Gomitoni used to live right here on Sullivan Street. Oh, my goodness. Sausages, peppers, and onions. Are you ready for that? No, I'm not ready for another food. But I mean, this is. Oh, my goodness. Here, Bob, take it. The whole, you know. Oh, is that great? A calzone. Is that great? Yo! Here you go. Number eight. Number 18. Okay, let's see what happens. This is exciting. Eight one! Oh, eight! I won! Oh, my goodness! Look! Look how ugly this is! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, that's enough. Hey, hey, yo. Watch this. Zeppelin! December! That's my money! I won December! I won! Jack, you're the lion! You're the lion! The lion! We won! We won the lion! Oh my god! Oh, that looks so good! That's terrific! Wow! <laughs> you know something? I had the most wonderful time here at the Feast of St. Anthony. Glad you came. Oh, me Glad too. You came. Thanks Thank a you lot. So much. Come on, Carol, let's go home. So long, Father Pat. I'm peeling this onion. Okay. Now, I like to make crescents. Now I take a nice green pepper. Okay. I discard this part. And then I chop this up and I make slivers. Now, I tell you the truth, this is fun. OK, let's see. Put this up to medium high. Now, because we're cooking sausages, we need very little olive oil, about two tablespoons of olive oil. And we're going to put in about four garlic cloves, because I think that this really needs and uses. Well, there's your four garlic cloves. <laughs> the wonderful Italian sausages that we saw being made. Just put them in there and brown those gently. Oh, yes. Okay, now. That's good. Now, you're just going to wait till they get juicy and nice and brown. And I'm going to add the pre-cut onion. There you go. Three onions. Looks like a lot, but it kind of melts away. Then two Ziploc bags of red, green, and yellow peppers. And what happens is, you keep stirring this around gently in a pan. And you have to kind of watch this, because what happens is that it all kind of starts cooking and gets gorgeous. Oh, oh my goodness. It's, it's, it's starting to smell good. I have woken up to smell Sunday morning spaghetti sauce. I wake up right away, you know? Now, if you 
had an alarm clock or the smell of sausages, peppers, and onions cooking, I would wake up faster to the smell of sausages, peppers, and onions than I would to the alarm clock. Like you can take a little hammer and hit me on the head. This would wake me up sooner, the smell of this. Now, while this is cooking, getting back to, of course, the last ingredient, which is a little bit of oregano, half a teaspoon of oregano, just a little bit of that, a little bit. And then, of course, you put some behind your ear in case somebody wants to know what your nationality is. You just keep cooking that until the sausages are done and the peppers and onions are tender. Now, they don't have to be wilted. See, my mom just keeps stirring this. She doesn't put a cover on this. She just does it till everybody's crying and saying, is it done? And then she says, yes, they're done. Oh, oh look at this. Is that ready or done? Wow, that's terrific. Thank you. Oh, look at the smoke. Is that good? Yeah, very good. Yeah, terrific. That's just so good. Sausages and peppers. Carol. Carol, here you go. Lunch is ready. All right, you got the bread. Come on. <laughs> Carol, wait. Wait for me. So, Ma, the main thing is that now we got all these company. It's going to be nice. Oh, look at this. Oh, boy, that's really ready. Just throw them all in there, Ma. Here we go. These are fresh macaroni. Yeah, that's the one we just bought on 11th Avenue. Yes, the macaroni store. Oh. OK, that's great. Yeah, oh, that looks good. Look. Yeah, beautiful. It's the fresh noodle. Yeah, that's nice. Stir them up, Ma. Stir them up. Oh, good. OK. Fantastic. Beautiful. That's great, Ma. Mm -mm. Yeah, just put a little more sauce on. That's great, Mom. Yeah, but I want to make smoke a little bit. All right. <laughs> okay. All right, just give me a little more sauce. More? Okay, that's great, Mom. Good appetite. Oh, Mom, look at this. Yo! Here, Mom, here, Mom. Mom, sit over here, Mom. Oh, that's great. Oh, Ma, that's beautiful. You, you want to sing glory to God? OK. Glory to God, glory. Oh, praise him, hallelujah. Glory to God, glory. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. All right. Now, veal, veal is very expensive. You can buy veal for $13 a pound. I don't know what the hell they feed those little, tiny little veals, but I mean, they're the most expensive animal in the world. And then, not only do you get veal, but people traditionally pound veal. They pound the hell out of it. The poor veal, here's some lovely veal. What happens is they put it down, they take the veal, and then they take, the, oh, I love this. This is my pounder, please. I, I would feel lost without it. And you just. Right, so now you pound your veal and you have a nice thin slice of veal. Poor veal. Now, my mother does not do it. Most people put it in egg and breadcrumb. My mother doesn't do that. She goes here and here, and then, then she goes into the egg and into the olive oil. Okay, now I'm going to show you one that is the other way. Let's just compare what happens to them. That's going to be interesting. Poverito veal. I'm going to do it the other way to show you the difference. Now, it's, it is different. It is different. It tastes different. Okay, that's with breadcrumb last. What I'm going to do now is serve that very simply on a dish with a piece of lemon. In Italy, if you buy a beef steak, you will get a beef steak with some lemon on it. It, it has pepper and it's done and it's from the grill and it's hot and sizzly and they put lemon. I don't know why, but it makes a wonderful kind of um, marriage of tastes. Now, I'm going to just turn this. See see what's happened? 
Can you see that this is more <laughs> eggy? And this is there's a difference in the in the way that those fry. When you are using this one, you can make uh, eggplant parmesan, chicken parmesan, veal parmesan. Um, but I prefer with the egg on the outside because it seems to absorb more of the flavors of the tomato sauce and the cheeses. It makes it a whole different, um, lighter, thicker veal color. I mean, after you pound somebody. Now, if you don't have $13 and you don't have $7 and $8, a chicken breast. Ooh, come in closer. This is so interesting. See this chicken breast? I'm going to fillet it. Now, I'm going to pound my chicken breast as if it were veal. Chicken, 67 cents a pound. 67 cents compared to $13. Now, look. Pound your chicken. Here you go. Into the breadcrumbs like Mama does. And now, here's the egg. Now, I'm going to serve that. And if you can tell the difference between a pounded chicken breast and a pounded veal, I'll give you $12.42. Now, the first thing I want to do is put this in a paper towel because I, I really don't like to just... Oh, thank you so much. You're a wonderful person. Who is that? And I like to get all of this off. Now, what happens is I put tomato sauce on that. Here you go. Not a lot. Tomato sauce on that. My cheese uh, is grated on that. See that? A little very, very simply. I'm going to say three, and this whole thing is going to be filled with cutlets. One, two, three. Oh, I... <laughs> he said, wow, that's two. Two for one. Two for one is good. Listen, see, now all you got to do is take this and um, bake it for 30 minutes in a medium oven. Veal parmesan. Okay. Let me just establish something. We had chicken, my mother's way of doing the veal cutlets, and this is the breaded version. Can, would you submit to, um, to a oh, test, a taste submit. test? Here you go. This is the... So I'm not going to tell you, but then you tell me which one you prefer. Okay, I'll give you little bites, because I know you... Close my eyes. Close your eyes. Okay. Okay, now just... That's one. Just remember one. Mm -hmm. Have you got an idea what it is already? Good. Okay, this is two. Oh, sorry. Wait, uh, cleanse that. Okay. Okay, mm. here's two. Okay, now... I remember what you had. I like that one. You like that one? Mm. Okay. That was my mother's. That, yeah. Well, now you know what this is. Which do you like? $13 a pound, 67 cents a pound. Ladies and gentlemen, out of her own mouth. I like this one. You like the 67 cents one best? That's my girl. I know it. Oh, what a cheap date. <laughs> oh, God. Come on. I'll buy you a piece of chicken. 67 cents? Yeah. Oh, that's what You see how mom makes the veal cutlets? She puts the egg glass and it really comes wonderful. Is that what you do that, Rita? Sometimes you use the breadcrumbs first. Yeah. That's really good. This stuff is great. Oh, my goodness. It's great. Oh, thank you so much. Here you go. This is for Phil. Here you go. Very little you want? Phil, Grandma says she wants very little. Has, any, has anybody ever heard Mom say, eat this, it'll make you feel better? I did. Oh, boy, oh, boy. She said, I'm eat this, it'll make you feel better. It's got a chofala, artichoke. Very interesting. A lot of people don't even know what it is. You need to pick it up and eat it in a very strange manner. You put it in your mouth and you pull out the part you don't want. Whatever stays on your teeth, you eat. It's wonderful. Artichoke. They come about this big, and uh, the stem is edible. So um, for cooking purposes, we're going to remove that. And then I discard one layer of leaves on the bottom. And then what I do is I cut the very top off, because we're not going to use that. Here we go. OK. So sorry. I hate to be that rough. Sorry, listen, we all got our troubles. And then you trim, there you go, each one of these pointy tips off. This reminds me of uh, the Dom de Louise show. It was almost called the clip joint. That's right. But my mother is 88 years old, and uh, when I told her that it was going to be called the clip joint, she said, <laughs> why don't you call it the Dom de Louise show? She's 88. I'm not going to argue with her. Anyway, it's the Dom de Louise show, and that's been fun to do. Okay, so then we trim all this off. Every one of those points gets trimmed off. 
because you're going to grab that with your fingers and you don't want to be uh, pricked. Now, you take a spoon and you remove the thistle. The thistle is the central, central part. It's not edible and it gives you a little resistance when you eat it, even if you boil these in chicken broth, which is just great. Now, you take this and you just get all that thistle out and you just rub it down and right there is the heart. You see, and then when you when you when you got it down really clear, it looks like this. So you see how it's clear inside. Now that's now this is all edible. Now we're going to uh, what I do is I also remove these, and I peel this, and I put this in with it, and this is very much the taste of the heart. Oh, this is lovely. A little lemon juice so it won't get brown. Okay, now we're going to make the uh, stuffing. So we're going to put um, four tablespoons of olive oil. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. Four tablespoons of olive oil. And then we're going to add uh, two nicely minced garlic cloves. Oh. See, that was good. Now that browns gently, very gently. And while that's browning gently, we're going to take two eggs and um, beat them. Take that, you dog. Put that aside. Now we're going to take two cups of flavored breadcrumbs and put them in there and just move that around and let that all kind of permeate because we're going to stuff four artichokes with this. So I'm making enough for four, although today I'm just making one. And now we're going to kind of dribble the two eggs in there. Here we go like that. Four tablespoons of grated cheese. Mix that all up. Now, I'm shutting that now because I think that's quite enough. And I'm going to put two tablespoons of parsley chopped. There we go. Take the stems out. So now, this is all kind of ready to be stuffed into the artichoke. Here's the artichoke. And what happens is you're going to fill that center, which is kind of fun, and just kind of ooze down on the sides there so that not only does it get inside, but along the sides of it so that you have an awful lot of stuff to um, contend with. I mean, this is like a lunch for somebody who has no place to go, you know, because it takes time to eat this stuff, okay? So now, okay, you do this with four of them. Now, what I do is I put this in there with it. You'll find it later. And you take well, actually, a quarter of a cup of chicken broth. And then we are going to cover it with tin foil. And now you leave it in a 350-degree oven for um, 45 minutes to an hour. And uh, this one was done. Here we go. Okay. Very good. Oh, good. That looks good. Okay. I'm going to take, ooh, 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 mm, 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 that's hot. Okay, you just dribble some of that remaining juice on that. And then you have what we call stuffed artichoke. Mm, mm. You're on your own. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, that's great, I see that. Oh, those are nice, they came really good. Ma, that's good. You made a beautiful stuffed artichoke. That's sensational. Mama, this is so good. Mm. Thank you. Could you pass down a little of the pasta? Regina, here you go. That's good. That's great. Oh, thank you so much. Here you go. This is for Phil. For Phil. Here you go. Rosemary. Rosemary. Oh, Rosemary. Rosemary. This is for Rosemary. 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 Look at Rosemary. The baby's gorgeous. She's so beautiful. Don't make her over eat like me. <laughs> oh, no, she's just asparagus. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Yo! I hope it's your day. If it's a birthday or what, no matter what you're celebrating, you're going to get this cake. My mother always, always makes this cake. She loves it. No matter what the occasion, she will give you this cake. Now, 
It's awfully good. It has fresh food in it. People love it. Pretty. Uh, it takes a little time to do what I'm doing. Separating six eggs. You know, it's so funny. You can separate six eggs like this. Look, you can take six eggs and just separate them. You know, three over here and three over here, they're separate. But no, you have to just take the whites and go like that. Do this. Take that. Now they have little machines that you can drop the egg in that have a slotted center, and then it holds your, your yolk back for you. One, two, three, four, five, five, six. Was that six? Is anybody counting? Yes. Whoa. Okay. Yolk. Now we're going to use that in a second. Okay. Now I'm going to beat this up. Makes a little noise. Okay, now, those are nice and stiff, see? Okay, that's the egg whites. That's very important. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take baking powder and add it to one cup of flour. One cup of flour. I saw, mix it all up. Here we go. Here's my yolks, my sugar, my vanilla. Okay, now I'm going to start this again and slowly add the yolk. One cup of sugar. Vanilla. Measure that. Flour. Put the baking powder in it. Now look, folks, that's a batter you don't often see. That was very light. Now I take a pan and I line it with wax paper. And what I'm going to do is pour that into two nine-inch pans. Lovely. Half in this. And then half in another one. And what happens is that as this cooks, you put it in the oven and you peel away the uh, paper and then you can... Build your layers. That's layer number one. Okay. Wow. And this one's done. Isn't that nice? Here you go. I'm dumping this like this. Here you go. Now, what you do is this just peels back. Here you go. All right, here you go. There it is. Okie dokie. Light. It's light. Here you go. And that's your first layer. And here's another one. Oh, la, la. Here's another one. Okay, now, since this is a strawberry cake, in my mind, I lay it down like this. Now, what my mother does is she takes pineapple and she puts pineapple on this layer. You know, pineapple with the juice. Here you go. Pineapple. Okay, here's pineapple. But I like the pineapple is just oh, it's such a lovely cake. But I like to put some peaches in there so you can find the peaches also. So... This is an added little thing. The peaches are around the sides. When you cut into this, you have pineapple and peaches. Okay? You can put a little juice in there. Oh, this is the middle. See, this is the middle part. Okay, now we're gonna we're gonna decorate this with, with strawberries and with some whipped cream. Ah. Whip your cream. Ah. Whip your cream. Whoa, okay. Here you go. Where are the kids? Now, you're going to put this other layer right on top. And I like to use this part, the bottom, for the top. And I'm going to put a little bit of cream in here. Okay. There you go. And I'm just putting that on the top. Now, you want to do something while nobody's looking. You can pour some of the juice of this on there. Here you go. Okay. Now we're putting this on the top. Some whipped cream. Gee, oh. that looks wonderful. That's beautiful. Oh, Super duper. Beautiful. This is a swell cake. Oh, what fun this cake is. I can't see the sides. I want to be sure that, it, that it's all over the sides. No, I can't have any cake. I'm just having full. I don't know if I have any cake. No, I'm so full. Did I, did I get the sides down there? I like to do all of that. I think that's really important. 
Well, a little pink. Maybe one little pink. Strawberries. Wink, wink. Wink, wink. Wink, wink. I thought you couldn't eat anymore. I always. Oh, this is fun because it reminds me of home. Oh, that one's sorry. As long as it's sponge cake, I'll have another piece. What the hell? It looks so good. That's right. There you go. Oh, you're not through. You see, you can take peaches and carry on. You see, this is just looks fun, doesn't it? Now, you saw that from scratch. Oh, look at that. Okay. Oh, mm. Oh, mm. Oh, mm. Mm. Oh. See, a half a strawberry starts making it look very festive. And it's very simple to decorate. You know, your kids would love to help you decorate this cake. Isn't that Grandma's cake? Yes, it's Grandma's cake, of course. Here, would you like a taste? Okay. Light. Good? Good. Oh, you really take the cake. Yo! All right, Mom. Whoa! What a beauty! Oh, Mom, that's... the cake, and I'll make all the occasion. And I enjoy to do, and I hope you enjoyed the same thing. Thank you, Mom. Oh, beautiful, Mom. Hey, Rita, would you cut the cake? All right, gee, that looks wonderful. Oh, mother, so good. She's a jolly good fellow. For she's a jolly good fellow. For she's a jolly good fellow. Which nobody can deny. Which nobody can deny. Which nobody can deny. For she's a jolly good fellow. For she's a jolly good fellow. For she's a jolly good fellow. Which nobody can deny. Give me a kiss. I love you, Mom. Does anybody want a piece of cake? Hey. Oh, David, my youngest boy. Isn't that Grandma's cake? Yes, it's Grandma's cake, of course. Here, would you like a taste? Sure. Okay. Light? Good? Good. Sure. Oh, you really take the cake. That's for right here. Just a moment. That is amazing now, really, Michael. Just a moment. Say, I'm sorry. Um, Come here. Say, I'm sorry. Oh, say, say, I'm sorry. <laughs> Say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There you go. That's mean. Hey. Oh, that really mean. This is Get him. No! Wait, no. Get no, no. OK, no. stop. Stop! <laughs> oh. Oh, 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 we have the cut before that? Oh, eat this, sure. <laughs>